Hey YouTube, welcome to part 2 of the wood splitter build. There's an awful lot of welding in this build because I needed it to be very strong. I wanted it to be able to take something between a 20 and 30 ton ram. I believe I've got that. My ram's just over 20 ton, but I think there's plenty of strength in the job for it to work for something bigger. Anyways, a lot of welding in this segment. Well, I do try to explain about why I'm welding it and the reasoning behind the welds and what welding rods I'm using, etc. So if you already know all about welding, you're probably not going to get much out of it other than looking at me doing the welding. Anyway, have a look and see what you think. So I've popped this piece 009 and 010 off on a couple of scrap wedges. So I've got a nice B in there to weld into and I'm going to use some 1 8 inch, that's 3.2 millimetre, 70-24. Lay a heavy bead into that, running at about 170 amps, thereabouts. Not a lot of room to work around here at the moment. I'll let that cool a little bit and I'll put some more weld on him, maybe. Get the flux off that first and just see how it looks. He might not be too bad with one pass on that. It'll be mainly under compression and shear load. There'll be no tension on that weld. The well, shear could benefit from a little bit more bulk. Had a nice bead down in there. I think it could use a bit more bulk. I decided I'd leave it with just a single bead there. It's a really nice, neat bead. It's got good penetration. Given the loading on it, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that'll do the job. Reasonably confident it will. Got it all lined up again now, painstakingly measured so that everything is centred. Try and put a couple of tacks on him just to hold him in place. A couple of decent tacks there. I want to be able to take this off and get some good measurements all around him. Yep, he'll do. Right where he is. And once I get all that welded on, these other pieces go here like this. Again, flush top and bottom and I will probably put a backing plate on it as well because the load pushing back this way most of the compression force will be taken by that backing plate. I'm just going around now and welding up random spots. As I said before I think I don't have room on the table to set this up properly so I'm just rolling it around on a stand in the end of the table and doing what presents itself. Once I get the table back I'll go around and finish the bits that I couldn't get to. Now it's just a matter of going around and welding up all the surfaces that you can find with a weld bead that you think is strong enough to hold it all together. Now I'm not a trained engineer, I'm not a professional welder, I just put enough weld on it until it looks as though it's strong enough for me. Now so far this has worked for me, the splitter seems to be quite strong enough when I've used it, it's up to you to decide just how much weld you need though. I'll just zoom in here and give you a bit of a close-up on the welds that I did. Now this is using 7024 rod. It was a 1 8 inch rod that's uh, 3.2 millimetres. I find that the 7024 rod always leaves a beautiful feed and it's very controllable. Although well, it's only suitable for welding on flat surfaces. And by that I mean no vertical up or vertical down, no overhead, etc. The next job on this wood splitter, I've tipped him upside down, I've got to weld along here on both sides and up here along the bottom. This has got to be flush because it's getting the reinforcing SHS put along there. Start off down on these bottom ones I think with the 7024 that I've been using. Might switch to some thinner 7018 for these top ones I think so I don't build up too much weld in them. First I need to turn the welder on. And putting the earth clamp over here off the welding table would also help. And I'm still running these at about 180 amps. Manufacturer's uh, recommended maximum for these rods is 190. They seem to be working really well for this at 180. Now I'm doing the same thing on this end. Still the 7024 rod, still this bottom piece. Amazing how much a swinging cord will wobble your weld hand.
question now is, do I try these top ones with the 7024 or get the thinner 7018? I'll try one with the 7024, I think. The main reason for wanting to see if I could do it with the 7024 is it's a uh, much higher amperage and I expect to get better penetration from that. 7024 will work for that, I think. And these thicker rods and higher amperage. Just have a little bit of grinding to do to make them nice and flush. I'll run down each side of this. Oh, that's really good, that one. Probably won't have enough rod to finish this in one run. Done and dusted. He just needs to grind off now. The yeah, I-beam I got for this project was a little bit smaller than I actually wanted, but I got it at the right price, so I didn't complain. I also had this piece of SHS with a 5mm wall left over, and it was 76mm, the same as the width of the I-beam. So I'm welding that along the bottom. The bottom of the I-beam is mainly going to be in compression, so this SHS will reinforce it a lot. We will move the centre of the port down a little bit, which will put more tension load on top, but the I-beam is designed for tension load anyway. It won't be a problem, and it should be a lot stronger. I'm quite certain that this will be strong enough to do 20 tonne plus on the hydraulic ramp. In paying attention to the video, you will have noticed that my SHS is in two sections. And again, this shouldn't be a big deal because it's in compression load. I had originally thought that it was pretty good that my two sections had a 45 degree angle on them so that I could join them with a longer weld. But thinking about it, being in compression load, that puts more shear on the weld. So not sure if it's as good a thing as I originally thought, but I don't think it'd be too weak either. I'm just going to join these two bits of SHS now. Again, not something I suggest you guys do, but I'm using up material that I have on hand. You see that white smoke coming out of there? Always remember if you're welding anything that's got galvanised on it, keep away from that smoke. Ideally I'd have a pan on it, but I'm not welding a terrible lot and it's getting into winter so I'm just forgoing the pan at the moment. I've got the doors open so there's plenty of ventilation, but just no pan so staying away from the worst of the fumes, hopefully that's enough. Well, that wasn't a happy place, because this is a lot thinner here. Didn't think that's true at all. There's not as much meat there to weld into because of the way I ground it. So what I will need to do is to pull out the 2.5 mil or 332.7018s. Crank the amperage down and see if I can make amends for that little blow through. Alright, see what we can do with it. Yes, yeah, I'll be able to repair it, thank goodness. Oh, well, he's repairing okay. Little bit of blow through just there in the middle, which I'm pretty sure I can repair easy enough. Must have been just a little bit uneven on the grind, just there. Thin in the middle. Hmm, taking a little bit more effort than I expected. Just as well this is under compression load. Because if it was under tension, I'd be strapping these parts and buying a new piece. Actually, if it was under tension, I wouldn't even be trying to weld them together in the first place. There we go, done deal. Alright, grind that down plus so I can weld him onto the bottom of the I-beam now. In order to minimise distortion, I stitch weld down along the length of the SHS, about 2-3 to three inches long and separated by maybe 12 inches. And then after I'd done both sides, I went back and welded the gaps between them. The welder for the first time ever 
has tripped off on overheat because I'm working right up near the top end of its amp range. I do have to go along and put a weld all the way along on both sides, so it's going to overheat a few times, I'd expect. First time I've been doing such a big job with it. The idea of putting this SHS down underneath is because the bottom's in compression load, the top will be plenty enough to take the tension load that it will be on. But I thought the bottom might need a little bit of reinforcing to stop buckling, and putting this on it will have the effect of moving the centre down further, which will increase the load, tension load on the top a little bit, but should mitigate the compression load on the bottom, and it was compression that I was expecting to fail first. So anyway, that's the story behind that. I will do the welding off camera because it looks like it's going to be done in dribs and drabs as the welder permits. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Next week we'll get a little bit further into the build. Don't forget if you'd like to see the plans for this, you can download them from my website. And if you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.